as we've seen the nature of lymphedema with its impact across multiple systems within the body calls for a holistic approach to address the physical, mental, as well as quality of life issues with this integrative approach. Hello, I'm Catherine Winslow, stage four cancer sort of thriver and certified professional aromatherapist at Cancer Rehab and Integrative Medicine. Aromatherapy is particularly well suited to weave into this integrative care. And I know that visual aspect is so important, so I will bring up slides to share with you. So our intention today is to explore aromatherapy's role in this integrative practice safely, effectively, and practically. We'll look at aromatic and topical routes and we'll look at some selected examples of incorporating aromatherapy into your care with your therapist as well as at home. And there's some additional resources that will be available to you at the end of this slide presentation. Although not all lymphedema is cancer related, this holistic approach promoted by the National Institute of Health is still appropriate in this context. So aromatherapy is the therapeutic use of essential oils, and therapeutic as intentional use of essential oils, also known as volatile aromatic compounds, which volatile in this case means that the molecules extracted from these plants are so tiny that they are able to travel on the air. And it's important to note that we are talking about essential oils extracted from plants as they occur in nature, rather than synthetic lab created mimics that don't have the breadth of the number of compounds that occur in nature in order to get the synergy of the benefits for the improvement of the physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. So aromatherapy used along with those other complementary as well as standard treatments. And so that considering each therapy, treatment, and product on its own merits for what it brings to the care. One of the things to keep in mind with these gentle from nature essential oils is that they're very concentrated. A comparison to the dried herb around, uh, essential oils are typically 50 to 70 percent more concentrated than the dried herb so only a small amount is needed. We'll look at the couple of routes to a couple of methods of aromatherapy, inhalation method and the topical method. Ingestion is a very valuable method of using aromatherapy. It should always be used with a certified professional aromatherapist, so it's outside of the context of our conversation today. The inhalation method is interesting. We talked about those tiny odor molecules coming through the olfactory system into the limbic system in the brain, which is where our emotions and our feelings come from, as well as then being distributed through some of these other body systems, the hormones, the glands. And in addition, when we experience aromatherapy, through inhalation, we also get the respiratory benefits immediately. Topical application, essential oils, again, they're very tiny and absorbed quickly through the skin into the bloodstream. It can be in as little as 
20 to 30 seconds for some essential oils. Then carried through these different systems throughout the body and the one that we're particularly interested in today, of course, is the lymphatic system. Speaking of how quickly the essential oils are absorbed within the bloodstream, I'm going to show you uh, another visual. I think, I think it's helpful. These are two different blood draws from the same person before and after the application of essential oils. So the these are fasting blood draws for four hours or more before, and we can see the uh, red blood cells there. Then one application, five drops of bergamot essential oil. 30 minutes later, again, still fasting, we can see this tremendous difference. So we can see that essential oils do have an effect within the bloodstream. We've known from inhalation for millennia, we've been able to observe and experience the impact that essential oils have on our mood, on our feelings. And now with MRI imaging, we have the opportunity to actually map that and see the nuanced differences in the limbic system of the brain where these different essential oil families impact. So what does that mean? If we know what the expected outcome, the expected effect of a particular type of essential oil can have, then we can choose that outcome. Say for instance, at the end of a long day and we want to relax and feel calm, and we know that floral oils typically have that response, we can choose a floral oil, such as lavender, to support that. So how does that translate into lymphedema care? We'll look at some of these different ways we can bring the aromatherapy to bear on our lymphatic care. With a guideline from the National Lymphedat National Lymphedema Network, the, one of the first things they recommend is to find a certified lymphedema therapist. So working with your therapist for to support lymphatic flow and uh, the swelling, the inflammation underlying that can accompany that, and sometimes pain. When we see the literature and also therapists that incorporate aromatherapy within their manual lymphatic drainage, citrus oils always appear. And one of the most common is grapefruit. Citrus oils have a high limonene content, which means they're activating the white blood cells, they're analgesic, so in other words, uh, address the pain issue. They're anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antioxidant. So we get all those benefits. In addition to those types of benefits, some of these other essential oils that were chosen, geranium uh, has a relaxing effect. It's diuretic. Grapefruit is also a diuretic. Both of those are um, very calming and Geranium has a, stimu a gentle, stimulating effect on the lymphatic system. Myrrh is, again, analgesic. Also very, it's called a cicatricent, which means it's very supportive for the skin tissue regeneration. Copaiba, in addition to its antioxidant properties, has a high beta carinophylline content, which helps with the pain relief associated with our CB2 receptors. Peppermint we'll see a num in a number of different uh, applications here because of its wide-ranging benefits. In particular, it's a decongestant, it has immune support, and it's a liver protective. So anytime we can support the 
the our liver filter that is very helpful. So this is which ones to use. How do we use them? Always be safe and use a carrier. Carrier oils not only dilute the concentrated essential oil, they also, by providing that film, helps distribute those one or two drops that are always necessary of the essential oil ac evenly across that entire area. Jojoba is a great choice. It's closest to oil and sebum and pH. Arnica is very helpful for pain. As with any natural uh, product, always shake it before using. And having a stock blend already prepared with your chosen blend of essential oils diluted with the carrier, again, means that it's going to be more practical. You're going to be more likely to use it on a consistent basis and get those benefits. Back to our recommendations from, uh, for the healthy habits. Exercise is an important, any kind of movement uh, for those experiencing lymphedema. So the mobility that we have, the walk, whether it's walking, uh, the yoga and uh, Pilates classes that we have at Cancer Rehab and Integrative Medicine, Tai Chi and Qigong are, are great choices. But sometimes when we're experiencing challenges, whether those are physical challenges or emotional ones, we need a little bit of extra motivation to get moving. And essential oils that are known to be uh, uplifting and invigorating can be helpful in doing that. One of the things that's coming up for a number of my clients at this time of year with pollen and congestion issues is being, just being able to breathe. Three great choices for that are lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Peppermint is a great decondent. One, as soon as you begin to inhale that, it can open up the respiratory passages 20 to 30%. Lemon is cleansing and lavender is a natural antihistamine. So, and again, they're uplifting and invigorating. So getting this moving. And how do we do that? We can do that directly from the bottle nice to close our eyes. We can put one drop in the palm and rub that together and inhale that. One of the applications, the nasal inhaler, the aroma stick, that our nurses in our professional aroma therapy groups are utilizing more and more in hospital and clinical settings are these nasal inhalers. Very effective, very uh, practical, uh, rather inexpensive and um, handy to have. A steam tent could be helpful if you're already experiencing congestion, an old home remedy. You wanna use warm, not boiling water. Again, one or two drops of essential oil is plenty. Close your eyes. Splashing on the shower wall is a great way to get going in the morning to make a citrus oil on there. I get a lot of questions about utilizing within a nebulizer. Yes, you can, but please only with professional guidance. So then once we get moving, what if we experience muscle tension from that? And it, when we're experiencing lymphedema, we may be favoring that limb or holding our body in an unusual position so that then we have tension or just shoulder tension in general. These essential oils are chosen for their pain relieving and anti-inflammatory properties. Marjoram and Roman chamomile both are central nervous system sedatives. Roman chamomile and peppermint uh, are both helpful for supporting digestive system. As we saw, Peppermint is a decongestant, and it's also liver supportive. And um, juniper, in addition to this, is a diuretic. So then looking at skincare and infection, 
So the dry cracked skin that lessened elasticity and pliability for the skin, which then can uh, result in infection and with a compromised immune system, that's especially concerning. So working with your certified lymphedema specialist, uh, therapist, and or your oncology trained esthetician on how to keep that skin cleansed properly. Once it's dry, then you can look at the butters, shea, cocoa, combo butter, to then put a protective film on there to seal that moisture in. And in addition to improving skin flexibility and softening and lubricating, these are also antioxidant. Then throughout the day, if you want to introduce some more moisture, you can look to the oils, the jojoba, the tamanu, the calendula. These, uh, tamanu is especially wound healing and it's a germicide, promotes new tissue formation. Calendula in particular, in addition to lymphedema, if there are concerns about radiation, dermatitis calendula is especially supportive for that. You can add a drop of essential oil to your moisturizer. Tea tree is a great choice because in addition to all of these are anti-inflammatory, tea tree is also antifungal. So it can be particularly helpful with nail care. And it's a strong antiseptic, tissue regen regenerative. Again, in looking at these, if when we're being proactive, as well as if issues are already present, it's great to have the antimicrobial properties with these essential oils to rely on and again, help be proactive. Helichrysum is particularly wound healing. Cypress is analgesic and it's also a diuretic. Laurel leaf is particularly supportive of the lymphatic system. So a great thing to do is to be sure and place a, a dab of that oil on the lymph nodes. Lavender, I always recommend to uh, have handy. Keep it in your kitchen. You may have impaired sensitivity to heat or uh, other things. And if you have that lavender right handy as a first aid, in case of insect bite, put that on immediately. A rollerball is a great, simple way to already have your essential oil blend diluted with your car chosen carrier. And uh, if that, if your if the skin is really tender and even that touch is too much, you can just use a spray bottle. So again, working with your certified lymphedema therapist. You may have scar tissue from surgery or the cording, that uh, rope-like structure that can occur. These essential oils were chosen for their anti-inflammatory and also the analgesic properties that they have. Myrrh, again, is particularly supportive of generation of the that tissue. Rosemary is a gentle circulatory uh, balancing and diuretic and liver supportive as well. One of the most enjoyable and fulfilling ways to explore aromatherapy or expand your exploration of aromatherapy is with its emotional aspects. So with anyone dealing 
with emotions, what if you get to choose how you're going to feel? And aromatherapy can give empower you with some of that. We know that uh, lavender and chamomile are, are seem to be very calming. When anyone dealing with a chronic or serious diagnosis, anxiety, stress, overwhelm are to be expected. Grief is not only the loss of a loved one, but also loss of expectation of our how we envision our life to be. And these oils can be supportive for that. Bergamot, by the way, is that distinctive flavor that in Earl Grey tea. Melissa is called the oil of light and enthusiasm. Grapefruit and bergamot in particular are seen as self-accepting and body image. So they can be very supportive in that way. Several studies just to share with you, uh, anywhere from, depending on the study, a quarter to as high as 75 to 80% of women newly diagnosed with breast cancer report these symptoms. But this can apply, again, like we said, to anyone with a serious diagnosis. And what this showed was that uh, early intervention was particularly helpful and helpful to manage symptoms. This first study was interesting to see the synergy between aromatherapy and therapeutic massage, that in a 30-minute session, they were able to have measurable, significant results. And the serendipitous aspect of this was that they found that it was also supportive for the immune system. In the second study, just shows you how the lasting benefits of this aromatherapy massage. Also, um, back to our aroma sticks, such a simple application with such great benefits. Over three quarters of the participants in this study reported at least one benefit, whether it's anxious, uh, less stress, less nausea, better sleep, and that the consistent use improved the, uh, the outcomes. So we've talked about a lot of essential oils here, and you may be wondering, oh, where do I start? So one thing to look at is what are you feeling? You can look here in this section here. What if you're feeling discouraged? gloomy, distressed, can look at citrus oils, can be seen uplifting, cleansing. What do I want to feel more of in that list? And one of the great things that comes from then that feeling of being uplifted is a confidence and then self-expression. So, and you can see what some of these other benefits are as well. Those are just, again, a few of the ways of implementing aromatherapy into your care. Here are some additional ones, and I've included a number of reference slides if you're interested in some additional information. So I so appreciate spending you spending your time with me today as we've looked at ways to incorporate aromatherapy safely, effectively, and practically into your lymphedema wellness routine.
Thank you.